three common habits that cause leaky gut. The purpose of this video is to draw some attention to habits that cause leaky gut. Now, most focus and attention with regard to leaky gut center around the things in your diet, things such as gluten or lectins or dairy. However, I don't think with most people that these are the primary drivers of leaky gut. Instead, I believe there are three very common habits that cause leaky gut, and we're going to cover these things as well as the types of leaky gut in this video. Before we jump into all the fun, it's best to first begin by defining what is leaky gut. Now, if you're trying to do a Google Scholar review, you're best not to look up the term leaky gut. Instead, you want to look up something called intestinal permeability. Now, intestinal permeability is exactly how it sounds. The intestine becomes permeable to things in your gut, specifically bacteria in your gut. Now, there are two types of intestinal permeability. There is transcellular transport, which is through cells, and then there is paracellular transport, which is between cells. What most people call leaky gut is paracellular transport. In other words, two cells are held tightly together and there are tight junctions that hold these cells together. And it's when you know bacteria and food kind of squeeze in between the cells. That's what most people think of as leaky gut. However, transcellular transport is also important. And this, as it sounds, is that the components of bacteria can kind of squeeze in through cells and get into the bloodstream. Both are important. Both transcellular and paracellular transport are important, and they can both affect you negatively. And when combined, that's kind of actually the worst case scenario. Transcellular transport typically happens in the small intestine, and you're going to learn why that is in a moment. Paracellular can be in the small or large intestine. It's particularly problematic when it happens in the large intestine because that's where most of the bacteria reside. Types of intestinal permeability. So here we have a picture illustrating what I just mentioned to you. We see the transcellular route where bacteria is simply going, or bacterial components are simply going directly through the cell. Now, paracellular transport, it's going in between the cells. And like I said, both can be problematic and both occur for different reasons. Lipopolysaccharide. Now that we know what leaky gut is, it's important to know that one of the biggest problems with leaky gut is that bacterial components leak from the gut into the blood. And that is ultimately the problem because once those bacterial components get into the blood, they cause an immune reaction and cause chronic inflammation. Lipopolysaccharide is one of these components. Lipopolysaccharide or LPS is a component of the cell wall of gram negative bacteria. Now, our gut and liver can process LPS, but there's obviously an, uh, you know, a maximum amount of LPS that they can process. And the primary enzyme that does this is alkaline phosphatase. However, you can absorb too much lipopolysaccharide. In other words, you can overwhelm the gut and liver's ability to process it. And what happens when this occurs is chronic inflammation. And then once we are chronically inflamed, there's inflammation going throughout the bloodstream. This exacerbates leaky gut because inflammation causes leaky gut and leaky gut causes inflammation. In other words, they kind of feed into one another. Behaviors that cause leaky gut. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of people kind of focus on their diet and what's in it as a primary driver of leaky gut. I do not believe that that is the case. I think a lot of this has to do with circadian rhythms, which is kind of beyond the scope of this little video. But there are three common habits that drive leaky gut. Combining them escalates the problem, and I'd be almost willing to guarantee that all of you do at least two of these on a regular basis, if not every single day. And those three things are consuming a high fat diet. And a little note here, this is not a ketogenic diet. That's a completely separate issue that goes beyond the scope of this video as well. Eating too many meals, a lot of people, and it's kind of become a societal thing where we're told to eat every three hours, which gives us five or six meals a day. And the reason to do this is it keeps your metabolism revved up. The problem is A, it does not do that. And B, it causes other problems, including leaky gut. And finally, eating too late. Now we're gonna go over each one of these in detail. Habit one, high fat intake. LPS is fat soluble, meaning 
it can actually cross through our cells. And when we consume fat, that actually helps that process out. Additionally, consuming fat in your diet increases gram-negative bacteria, and this is correlates pretty tightly to the amount of fat you eat, meaning the more fat you eat, the more gram-negative bacteria you're going to have sitting in your gut. When we absorb fat, we absorb LPS. And what happens is basically both fat and LPS can cross our cell membranes into the cell because they're both fat soluble. And then they are packaged together in something called a chylomicron, which we absorb during our subsequent meals. This is the definition of transcellular transport and mainly occurs in the small intestine. Now, if we're trying to kind of give an order of magnitude to this, there's not a lot of LPS in the small intestine. So this is much less consequential than if we were having leaky gut in the large intestine where all of the LPS is. However, if we consume a chronic high fat diet, this will increase the amount of gram negative bacteria in our small intestine can also increase small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that will cause us to progressively come, become better at increasing LPS absorption. Now, this diet is not the same as a keto diet. A keto diet is completely separate from this, and you'll learn why in a second. Habit two, eating too many meals. Eating five meals a day increases bacteria in the intestines, and anything probably over four meals is probably bad as well. The reason behind this is we have a housekeeping system in our gut called the migrating motor complex, and this doesn't start until the gut's been empty. So it probably doesn't even begin to happen until three to four hours after a meal, and then it's very slow and takes 90 minutes to, 90 minutes to complete. So if you're eating every three hours, this is barely even starting up. So what happens is since the migrating motor complex isn't moving food along, it kind of stagnates in the gut. It's not cleaning out the bacteria and the bacteria are hanging around longer to, and they have access to this food that's sitting in there. So we get a greater amount of bacteria in the gut. There's also a progressive absorption of LPS as the number of meals increase. There's a study in humans, this is in human subjects, showing that two meals causes less LPS absorption than five meals. And this was in adult males. They were eating exactly the same thing. It's just one group ate two meals, then the other group ate five meals, and then they switched. So we're literally comparing people to themselves. And two meals led to less LPS absorption into the blood than five meals. This likely increases both transcellular and paracellular transport. And ultimately, this is not a good situation. I know we're recommended to eat every three hours, but in my personal opinion, this actually causes bigger problems down the road, including insulin resistance, which makes things even worse. Habit three, eating late at night. A study in 2018 found that high blood sugar in the absence of insulin causes leaky gut. Now the study began in mice, but then they took human blood and wanted to kind of look at it to see if they could find any measures that correlated to the amount of bacteria and bacterial components in blood. As it turns out, hemoglobin A1C was the strongest measure and it typically functions as a three month average of your blood sugar. But how does eating late at night cause this? Well, Melatonin is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland when the sun goes down, and it increases as we sleep. And when we begin to make more melatonin, it's released into the blood, it binds to the pancreas, and that inhibits insulin secretion. Why we do this? It's probably a beneficial effect because normally we would be fasting at night, and so when we, we fall asleep, you want to inhibit insulin to keep your blood glucose levels up. However, if you eat right before you go to bed or within an hour or two, what's going to end up happening is melatonin is going to inhibit insulin secretion, and that's going to cause blood glucose levels to skyrocket. So eating late at night creates this perfect environment for leaky gut, high glucose, and no insulin. And the biggest problem here is that this will happen in the colon where all of the lipopolysaccharide is sitting. Additive effects of combining these habits. A high fat diet increases transcellular transport, and this is going to increase with a chronic high fat diet. So the longer you've been eating a high fat diet, the more LPS you have sitting in your gut, 
and the better you are at absorbing it when you eat your fat. A high calorie diet makes it worse. And in fact, I'd make the argument that if you're calorie restricted, this may not be as big of a problem as you'd think. Frequent meals progressively increases transcellular transport through the last meal. And in fact, you get the biggest dose of LPS absorption in the blood with that last meal. So when you couple this with a high fat diet, you're actually getting a huge amount of transcellular transport. Now, if that last meal is close to bedtime, there's an increase in trans and paracellular transport. And eating at night may be the worst as it increases paracellular transport in the colon where all the LPS is. These habits over time will drive insulin resistance and leaky gut. And in fact, insulin resistance will make leaky gut worse as it progresses and gets deeper. Insulin resistant mice have the high blood glucose, low insulin phenotype. In other words, they act as if there is no insulin even in the presence of insulin because they're insulin resistant. What that means is your cell, it's not the amount of insulin in your blood, it's that your cells are responding to insulin. And type two diabetics and pre-diabetics are insulin resistant, so they don't respond to insulin. So they have greater levels of leaky gut. Conclusion. Many people avoid certain foods to prevent leaky gut. However, behavior can drive leaky gut as well. And it's probably more important than diet anyway, based on the physiology. There are three common habits that promote leaky gut. First, a high fat diet. If you've been eating a chronic high fat diet, bringing your total fat intake throughout the day to less than 30 grams per day for a period of time can help clear out some of that bacteria with lipopolysaccharide in it. And it can also make you less efficient at absorbing it. Frequent meals are also problematic, so you want to stick to two or three meals in order to give that migrating motor complex a chance to clean out the bacteria from your gut. And finally, eating late at night. You want to stop doing this. You want to stop eating three hours or more before bed. Finally, insulin resistance makes all of these habits even worse, and it causes greater leaky gut. So if you have type 2 diabetes or you are insulin resistant, you absolutely need to correct that problem as well. Now, this isn't to say that you can't occasionally eat late at night or have frequent meals sometimes, but ideally if you have leaky gut, you want to take these three tips and put them to work now so that you can reverse and prevent leaky gut. Did you like this presentation? We truly hope that you did. It's based on the Stop Leaky Gut Challenge. It's just a little snippet of what you would get in that program. That program is 17 different points of things that you need to change to improve your gut health. These are three of the more important points. I think most people who have minor gut issues will see major improvements. You'll start to see improvements in a couple of days and major improvements in some weeks by following these simple steps. But we have more. Hack Your Gut has more programs and learning modules at your fingertips. For example, if you're interested in the Stop Leaky Gut Challenge, you can head on over to the Shop Programs tab. Additionally, we'll have more free learning modules ready for you guys. You'll learn about those in the emails. And there's more to come, including modules on implementation and motivation, which is just an area that isn't covered at all. And it's such a shame. A lot of people have good information out there. A lot of people have good plans, but if you don't know how to implement them or motivate yourself to follow them, it's really not that useful for you. And ultimately, in my opinion, a lot of people need to be measuring implementation. It's something that people don't measure. People will measure heart rate, they'll measure blood pressure, they'll measure, measure blood glucose, but they won't measure how well they're implementing the plan that they're trying to implement and that is a really important thing that you need to do we have tons of free content coming a lot of it i just see tons of misinformation out there as it pertains to health and i want people to kind of be up to date on the information i want them to know that you know this is fact this is fiction so i want to have a lot of free content on basic biological um processes. I also just want you, you all to kind of feel comfortable when you're reading studies to know what they mean. So stay tuned and share our lessons. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.